Once again, I'm joined by our panel of Big Ten Mental Health Cabinet members. We want to focus right now on women in mental health leadership roles. Uh, Abigail Eiler is Michigan's Clinical Assistant Professor of Social Work. Abigail, let me ask you, what lessons have been learned from the profession, specifically on having women in these roles? You know, in full transparency, it has not always been easy being a woman in a field that's been historically dominated and created um, for men and by men both as a player and as a professional. Um, but I will say, you know, we're approaching 50 years post Title IX. Um, and so every day that I show up, I recognize that. And I also um, embrace the fact that it's an honor to be a woman in leadership in our institution and in this field. Um, during my time playing and then also in my professional career, I've always been in leadership roles. And I've had to think a lot about what that's meant uh, my name is Anishinaabe Mwen, which is the native language on the land on which I currently reside here in Michigan, is Nigon Gamakwe and and it translates in English to she who leads woman. And I've had to learn that um, leadership and leading hasn't always been about being in front of the class. It's been about listening. It's been about learning. It's been about engaging. And sometimes it's about being on a Zoom box, having conversations that are both fun and difficult in everything in between. Leadership's an art. It's about moving a group of people or an individual towards a, a common goal. And it's something that I've always been committed to. And so as a woman in a leadership role, I've noticed that we've got to be prepared and I've had to be prepared for anything and everything. Um, you know, women in sports, we reach these leadership positions in, in business, um, when we are prepared to talk about things, make decisions that are supported by facts, research and, and logical reasoning. Um, and that's been really important. Um, I think the one thing that I've always taken into consideration is making decisions that are in the best interest of those that I'm serving. And as a woman in a leadership role, if I can always keep that at the forefront, then I know that I've always done my job and I've done my job well. And so, you know, there are so many lessons learned that I can think of that that's probably the most important to me. I think this question is interesting too, because we're thinking about being a woman in a leadership role, but also within athletics. And so I think that combines both being a female in a leadership position and in a very historically male dominated field as well. And so those are the things that I think about when I think about it in terms of mental health, I, I find that a lot of my mental health colleagues are females. And so within that field, oftentimes I hear from our athletes, like, you know, it's especially in traditionally male dominated sports where they might not have many other female role models. Um, it can be really, really helpful to um, have someone, especially in the mental health field that they can talk to who kind of um, can be a model in a certain way. Yeah, I think that, you know, we think a lot about our identities and bringing in all of our identities into the, the workspace and modeling how to integrate your identities um, into your professional roles for our student athletes. And I think as a woman, I feel a lot of responsibility, um, especially for our female student athletes to model integrating my multiple identities, one of which is also a mother, um, into the, my professional work and how I carry myself, because I think that that's going to increase the likelihood that these doors remain open for those young women um, when they're ready to enter the professional space because often you are the only one. And so for me, I found that surrounding myself with a support system that I can go have those conversations with other women in leadership roles, other women who are balancing multiple identities. Um, I think getting that support and encouragement and feeling like I can have those conversations outside of the room um, helps me have the energy to keep sometimes being the only one um, and in hopes that also then we make more space for other women as well. One thing that I've learned along the way, often being the only woman in the room at times is also developing really close um, relationships with our male counterparts or our other staff that we work with. I sit in many, many meetings with Randy and Jeff. And there are times in those meetings that my voice isn't heard when I speak up. And whether it's because of the topic that's being addressed or, or maybe because of who I am, I'm not sure. But I will say that every single meeting, Randy and Jeff hear me and they reiterate what I say. And that to me as a woman in leadership is, is also validating because it's like, you know, you've got these colleagues and these relationships that you develop that help make sure that your voice is heard and respected. 
in, in that, you know, you can't say enough thank yous for. Yeah. For all of us, uh, but especially white males, it's easy to fall into the trap of I know, and you don't. You may think, uh, but you don't know. And so I think making space to listen, uh, these three ladies, everything they've said is really remarkable. And I thank them. And it impacts me to know that as a husband and a father, that my daughter has people to look up to like this. And so thank you to each and every one of these, but I think it's really something that we all have to think about and to make space to hear all the voices in the room and that diversity of thought. It's a great point, Randy. Um, I think that Brad, your, your comments also ring true in so many ways. I think, uh, you know, the, the fact that mental health has been kind of upper, uh, underrepresented in, in terms of the sports medicine kind of medical model, what we've talked about. And so sometimes you are truly the only one in the room. Um, but then also even within, uh, sports, um, in general in athletics and in college, obviously we still have male dominant sports, um, that are still there. So even within the football team, you know, for example, the support team for football, having a woman, uh, athletic trainer, having a woman as, um, a mental health provider, you can still kind of be the, the one off. Right. And so, um, we, we need to do better. Uh, we need to do better in increasing our numbers and our visibility there and, and making sure, uh, as you and Abigail and Michelle have pointed out, that it's the diversity of thought that really is critical in those discussions and bringing in that other perspective. Strikes me that the important steps that need to be taken are one, find these talented women and give them the opportunities to be on there. And then once they're there, the men that are around need to listen and value those voices. And at least from the five faces I see here, it, it seems that that seems to be going pretty well, at least in this group. Thanks for the discussion.